Man, so good to see you, my yeah. friend. I loved your meditation. I felt it. It was wonderful. Perfect start. <laughs> Great. And I and I I'm so happy you're here because I love the science that you bring to this interpersonal facilities we have. So I'm real excited to hear what you have to say today. And 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 how Thank are you, you though? How are you? <laughs> Well, you know, I had the flu for a few weeks, but actually I'm doing great now. Good. And uh, I've, I've been meditating on this question for a long time, you guys. You know, you're absolutely right that this ability to perceive this way, to be out of the body, to astral travel, remote view, uh, near-death experience, it's, it's primal because it's what the soul is, really. Mm -hmm. But until we can teach this as electrical engineers, there ain't no government that's going to have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's changing. That is because as the uh, ET realities come forward, we're going to yeah. have to um, up yeah. the the ability to perceive reality, and it, it's 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 going to be quite shocking for those governments looking at nuts and bolts weapons. Yeah. Well, or, and just you know, governments won't tell you to get medically stabbed, and then you lose your aura after we know electrically that that is the only way through death is to keep that aura together. And we're going to describe that as scientists in a measurable way. That's, that's the goal here. So let's have less soulless governments because we're going to teach the physics of what you take with you when you die. That's the goal. <laughs> and before you die, what you can activate embodied. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And, and we're doing a webinar, right, um, Dan, in a week and a half where you're going to be going deeper into that as well, right? Lucid that's dreaming. Right. And, that's right. Um, yes. And that, that, and that. we introduced that today and go in more, more depth in a week or so. Yes, exactly. And, and that is my passion because, you know, I think it's urgent as a planet that we begin to prioritize that our children are able to do these things. And mm -hmm. until we can describe what it is that's happening, coherently when you lucid dream astral travel remote view and that's that's where this conversation starts today so um and i do have some slides prepared but i just wanted to give some examples so what what we believe is that during uh an experience of compression it's literally a squeezing operation for example when you have bliss uh peak experience uh when you're at a sacred site uh, when your brain waves make golden ratio. These are all examples of when compression is working and your aura is being squeezed and made centripetal, implosive or negentropic. And this is a very particular electrical phenomena because the result of that squeezing, visualize the pine cone as usual, is squirting out the center of that squeeze of that pine cone is a very particular kind of electric field. Uh, you know, mythics, mystics called it the Egyptians, the Ba from the Ka, rainbow light body, Kesjan body, uh, too many names, but what's the physics? So the physics is that most of the electromagnetic field of your aura, most of its inertia, its wattage, is propagating as a transverse wave up and down. But when, after the squeezing process down that pine cone, yeah. During that squeezing process, what is squirting out at the center is a component of the electromagnetic field called coherent longitudinal EMF, sometimes called scalar, which really isn't the right word. Wait. But that longitudinal EMF coherence, which, by the way, Bearden proved is the only physics of gravity waves, but propagating that longitudinal compressional component of that inertia coherently is specifically the part of your aura that can lucid dream, that can go through death, that can astral travel, that can remote view. And mm -hmm. the reason it can do that is because that coherent longitudinal EMF, sometimes called scalar, propagates to compression nodes in an array. And that's okay. the point. Wait, that, wait, one second, Dan. Yeah. I have to just ask you, how do you compress your aura? And, and is that something you want to do? Don't you want to expand your aura? How would you compress it? <laughs> Thank you for asking the, the basic question. That's, that's very appropriate. Well, yeah. the, the, one short answer to that question is the rose doesn't unpack 
until it packs perfectly. <laughs> the squeezing uh, comes first and then comes the radiance. That's the short answer, is that the implosion is the beginning. <clears throat> And that's why during bliss process, you have that golden ratio harmonic cascade from alpha to gamma in your brain waves. Our tool is flameinmind.com for brainwave measurement, golden ratio. And that's how we teach kids to see without their eyes. That's how Karatkov taught bliss and kids to see without their eyes. It's that golden ratio cascade, which is called perfect fractal or conjugate implosive. And that's the compression process. So but how do you do that? How do you implode, pull it in? Is there a technique for that? Well, you know, everyone who ever paid for an airline ticket to go to a sacred site, <laughs> they're actually yearning for precisely what we're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the sacred sites, which Karatkov so accurately proved is the only place telepathy has military quality <laughs> where the magnetic lines cross. It's the only place you could put up a cozy rev mirror <clears throat> and get consistent telepathy every time, which is an introduction to remote viewing specifically. In fact, remote viewing is actually enabled by these magnetic cross points. So <clears throat> your body is yearning for the experience of compression. So if you're living in a big city in a metal building with electrosmog and dead air, that Schumann cascade, which is implosive and phase conjugate, is not going to get to you and you don't get this magic squeezing process. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need nature. You need the magnetic lines that cross to enable your aura to compress well. And that implosive squeezing is the beginning of everything. So I was going to give some examples and then I have actually a slideshow about the science. The point is, that this is no longer speculation. No, I'm teaching as an electrical engineer to electrical engineers using measurement. Those, that's the conversation we're having. The measurement of what you are going to take with you when you die and the frequency signature that generates that coherence that enables you to lucid dream and to die well and to remote view and to astral travel and to have a coherent near-death experience. It's why near-death visions are electrically contagious as ray moody so well proved so the thing is i wanted to give a few examples and then i wanted to show you how you measure this and remember <clears throat> once you understand how these compression points the magnetic lines enable this inhabiting the array and that's the key word here the aboriginals called it the song line dreaming track you know, it's been called the collective unconscious, the communion of saints, but it's a very specific electrical array that enables this. And I wanted to give you just a couple of quick examples from my own experience. And then I wanted to show you the slides of measurement. So my own experience, I was recently in a small village church here in uh, South France, a gorgeous week, long story. And I had just finished doing a little simple dousing of that church. And sure enough, I got two thirds to the center there, two thirds of the way up the aisle. And I found this cross point at the nave and my hair stood up and it was all magic. And the magnetic line crossing that church was perfectly aligned with the crossing of the aisles. It was gorgeous. And you know, my hair was standing up and if you, you, you've all had that experience, but then I noticed something else. So I relaxed and then I did exactly what Alan Steinfeld led us through just now. I closed my eyes and you did, you know, grounding earthing. And I noticed something very specific. I closed my eyes and I saw very clear inner pictures of actually an underground spring and waterfall. And it was very clear to me that there's a magnetic line under that church with a with a water vein and that it crossed through a cave just up there. I could have told you exactly where that cave and that waterfall was. I was seeing it like a movie inside my head because I was inhabiting the array. The next thing ha that happened on a very similar trip, we were going to investigate a property here. And it turns out it was in a gorgeous mountain valley and there was a little stream in front of the house. And I noticed there was this incredible little magnetic place where your hair stands up right next to the stream, just in front of this little house in the wilderness. It was actually a, it was like a, I don't know, it was kind of a zoo in the wilderness. It was a gorgeous place. But then I noticed that the valley was vortex shaped. 
And then I noticed that every time I closed my eyes and relaxed, it's like my conscious went zoom out the top of my head and I could see from above like an eagle and look down into that valley every single time I closed my eyes. And I still, my hair still stands up today every time I think about that because it was so fun. <laughs> so anyway, that was an example of a magnetic line enabling you to inhabit the array. Now, we know, for example, not only is telepathy triggered, but lucid dreaming is triggered. We also know in the systematic way we've been teaching uh, healing at a distance using our Therify.net plasma, that healing at a distance is a regular thing you can count on, you can plan on, you can teach the physics, and it ain't a mystery. It works better if sender and receiver on, are on the magnetic line. Oh, on the magnetic line cross, even better which is the same is true for out-of-body experience, remote viewing, and astral travel. If you can find a magnetic line cross, it works better because that's called inhabiting the array. The other thing is, it just like Agni Hotra, all of that works better at sunrise and sunset. And that ain't a mystery either. It's because the perpendicularity of the four directions of the cross, which in physics is called four-wave mixing, in indigenous, it's called the sacred four directions. So, the, the perfect four-wave cross mixing of sunrise, sunset, the physics of Agni Hotra, why your hair stands up at just that instant, also enables remote viewing out about experience and remote healing using therapy. So what that's telling you, these are the clues we need to be putting together inside our head to teach this as electrical engineers. Now, the density of the magnetic line cross points is measured in nanoteslas. And it is interesting, the magnetic flux density. It's interesting that it, when Cozy Rev was installing the Cozy Rev mirrors, which, by the way, are a microwave coherent metal cylinder, and the metal, the frequency of the microwave tuning, you can now measure it's a couple to the adenosine diphosphate ATP ADP bond 1.91 angstroms, which is a microwave frequency, also phase conjugate punk, which is the physics of telepathy because it's microwave radio from your DNA. I'm going too fast, but you get the flavor. So these cozy rev mirrors, you could only install them after you measured the nano Teslas of the magnetic line cross. Hint. So this is all what we include in our little chart of. Einstein doesn't live here anymore. When Einstein called action at a distance spooky, what he specifically did not understand, of course, he never figured out why an object falls to the ground, but what he didn't know was that the longitudinal interferometry is the only physics of gravity waves. Here are the equations, because <laughs> it's obviously the compressional component that in initiates the acceleration, which is named gravity, the acceleration towards center. So this longitudinal coherence field is very important, the Ba from the Ka. You know, I was with the Gurdjieff school. We called it the Kesjan body. Have you made a Kesjan body? <laughs> in other words, have you exuded enough of that longitudinal coherence? Now, there was a one or more examples here, array versus telepathy. Oh, yes. So the next thing this leads us to is that at flameandmind.com, brainwave measure, we've been teaching kids to see without their eyes. You can see it at flameandmind.com slash outer vision. And this follows up Karatkov's beautiful work showing that golden ratio in brainwaves correlates to the moment children can close their eyes and they begin to see without their eyes. Now, as we've talked many times, the, <clears throat> the kids describe what they see inside their head as a little vortex. And that when you make the inner muscle, you could call it a psychotronic muscle, but actually the inner muscle that enables you to squeeze the plasma vortex inside your head named consciousness, <laughs> the inner muscle to squeeze that vortex to a point at which it becomes an eyeball and every child seeing without their eyes tells the same story. <laughs> so the plasma vortex becomes an eyeball when you learn to squeeze it with an inner muscle and that inner muscle is the cascade of your brain waves from alpha to gamma, it makes a locked in squeezing set of harmonics, which is a, it's a, called a phase conjugate pump wave is the technical term, which is exactly, exactly, exactly the Schumann harmonics. Hello. <laughs> and this is a squeezing process that enables the plasma vortex to implode, become negentropic. It's the only physics for why consciousness 
causes electric fields to compress, Bill Tiller's measurements. So this ability to make this implosive squeezing then results in first perception and then peak perception and then remote perception. And oh, by the way, the kids around the world, and this is so famous, kids seeing without their eyes these days, <laughs> It's almost regular that these kids start to, st to see their ancestors when this happens. And boy, does that ever freak the parents out. <laughs> Could this be a clue to the physics of clairvoyance? So this coherent longitudinal EMF radiation is something that's teachable. It's something that's measurable. It's something that has a known frequency signature by equation, Planck times Golden Ratio, named the title of my new book, PlankFire.com, P-L-A-N-C-K, P-H-I-R-E, PlankFire.com, the cause of gravity, the cause of charge collapse, the cause of implosion, the cause of consciousness. So that ability to implode charge and couple with that longitudinal array means that all of this conversation with Alan and Neil here is wonderful about, oh, yes, you need to connect with that inner array and you need to get to that point of stillness. Yes, yes, but this is no longer just a metaphor. No, this is the subject matter for a course in electrical engineering of what it is about the human aura that can go through death, that can go through that wormhole. So now we want to just show you some slides, which is the examples of measurement. So I'm going to see if I can, my little screen share will work. Keynote, it's called Why They Fall, <laughs> Why Things Fall to the Ground. Hopefully you're seeing my, my screen now. So <clears throat> this is called Electrifying Ideas on What is Remote Viewing Astral Travel Out-of-Body Experience, namely coherent or scalar Longitudinal EMF interferometry, the key to what is gravity, what is love, what is the soul. And you see my YouTube channel here, youtube.com slash Daniel Interfractal Field. Uh, and this is a reprise of our physics of consciousness behind the neg entropy of the med beds, floating city, warp drive, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a variation on some themes that we've been doing with Elena Danan recently as well. So we start with this idea uh, when there's the angst of this new film called The Pod Generation, when the women who are offered to have their babies in an, from an external egg, and they start to worry, are these kids going to have a soul? Ooh, maybe we need to know what a soul is so we can make basic decisions about being human beings. Hello. <laughs> so I, I give you the example. Here is the university study literature, bottom right, these are the actual frequencies known to replicably trigger lucid dreaming. Remember, it is well known and teachable that if you can lucid dream well, that's the predictor of what you're going to take with you when you die. So there, there may not be anything more important in your life to do than practice lucid dreaming if you would like to die well. And if ever there was a physics of what is a soul, it is that kind of coherence. Point is, <laughs> the university research li literature determined that 25 and 40 hertz were frequencies that which triggered that implosive compression, which I now know, and they didn't know, create that longitudinal coherence, which is the lucid dream because it enables you to inhabit the array. Anyway, the correct frequencies by equation are actually 29 and 47 hertz, and I'm about to show you that. So this is our therify.net. So we take that cascade of frequencies Here's the cascade. It's called a phase conjugate pump wave. It's based on the Schumann harmonics here in, in, in green and the equation in blue. And that is, you see, the five harmonics in my brain waves when I had this bliss experience. You've seen this slide before. So this is the implosive squeezing process. And it squeezes out at the center of that pine cone, that longitudinal coherence. And that's how and why we can replicably trigger a lucid dream because we electricians know what that is. And maybe if we knew how our children are gonna learn how to lucid dream and to have a bliss experience, maybe <clears throat> we could have a soul. I mean, as every Aboriginal will tell you, 
the definition of culture is not the color of your shoe polish, your wine, and your and your, your your tie. No, the definition of culture is: Can you teach your young people how to have a bliss experience? And by the way, with that definition, we in the West do not have culture. I repeat, we in the West do not have culture because we don't qualify for the Aboriginal well-known definition of culture. Do you know how to teach your young person how to have a bliss experience? Because that's going to make the stuff of soul, and that's called culture. And everything else basically is crap introduction to the actual physics of culture, because culture is, are your kids going to get a soul? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, I get over. I get over this. So here's where we teach. The, well, I'm going to start with the kids. So we're teaching kids how to see without their eyes. Their brain waves make this golden ratio cascade from alpha in green to gamma up here on top, 47. And actually, when Jean Charles Moyen famously did this, he made a much more coherent cascade. Big, big peaks, alpha here to gamma on top. His gamma was like 53 hertz, which actually matches the pyramid gamma. It's an amazing thing. Anyway, so this was when Jean-Charles Moyen replicably with witnesses repeatedly would teleport. Hello. Yes, he teleported repeatedly with witnesses and we measured the brain waves that did it and we're teaching the physics. And I do mean the physics of what it means to teleport. You, you embed with enough inertia into that array and that's a compression effect because basically the longitudinal field then distributes and you show up in that array like uh, Alan Steinfeld was saying, where you it, intention goes in that array. But remember, this is an array of soap bubbles that looks like this. It's fractal, dodeki, kosa, earth grid. And the center point where you propagate into that array depends on the delicacy of the foci of the implosion of your attention in that plasma tornado. So learning to develop that still point is the key, obviously. This is a slide we just show, uh, well, it's supposed to be ball lightning, but we make the point that the example is that ball lightning from our friend George Edgeley is famous for responding to telepathy. And we know why, because at the center of that imploding torus, so the charge collapse is inhabiting a super fluid called the unified field. It's incorrectly called the ether. It's actually a superfluid made of compression, rarefaction, plus minus charge. And where that compression enables charge collapse, optimized, perfected charge collapse, the agreed cause of gravity, the agreed cause and mechanism of consciousness. And so physics had already agreed the cause of gravity and consciousness was charge collapse. They just didn't know the cause of charge collapse. I answered that in my new book, plonkfire.com. You got to give me a, a pass for doing a little ad here. But here we, we just reviewed the physics in quite some de detail. And at plonkfire.com, you find all five books. And all five books, by the way, are actually free in PDF or in Kindle. This is this, And this is what Plonk Fire looks like. So that's the implosion array. And most of you've seen these animations before. So what... And I want to show you the, the result of this implosion charge collapse, which is at the center where you make this coherent longitudinal. Here you can just, it's the same slide. You can see it's a little bigger. The Schumann harmonics, 3, 7.8, 3, 14.3, 20.8, and then 30, actually. This cascade optimizes all golden ratio times Planck. And that Schumann cascade is the reason that the brainwave harmonics have to do exactly that, the same way pyramids do exactly that, because that, that phase conjugate pump wave spits out the coherent longitudinal, which is how pyramids are a global wireless power grid, for example. Here's an example of measurement of that Schumann harmonic cascade in a sacred tree, actually. So here's the Schumann harmonics on the right. This is our measurement of the tree on the left. And we're measuring the weak capacitive field of that tree with the same device we use to measure brain waves. And when you get that cascade, that implosion means that tree can be part of your bliss. Good place for the Buddha to sit, actually. So here's the the, the defining moment of the physics. This is the actual harmonics in green of the known tidal frequencies of the sacrocranial pump, the only physics of kundalini and bliss. 
And in red, you have <laughs> golden ratio times Planck. The perfected phase conjugate pump wave in your spine liquid is the physics of bliss and brain waves and implosion because that's how implosion works. Note that 0.90959. That's the Mayer wave here, the most important frequency in the blood, the, the 0.1 hertz breath. And so this all becomes the physics of Kundalini, which we've taught before here. And you see the low frequencies harmonics of the brain waves, fitting the breath harmonics, fitting the HRV harmonics, fitting the Schumann harmonics. It's all one cascade. And interestingly, how that exact cascade, actually the British foot embeds in the geometry of the Roman pace in the megalithic yard and my friend John Michel, but the definition of sacred dimension is only and exactly precisely that same charge collapse. So this is introduction to how pyramids become a gravity diode because they're imploded by this frequency cascade and they spit out the longitudinal from the Schumann cascade called the Hummer. And that Schumann pressuring the pyramid to implode and spit out a longitudinal coherence, why pyramids heal people, but also why they make a global wireless power grid, because that longitudinal coherence is then distributed around the earth grid in the dodeci cosa. And that's what Tesla got wrong. It's why he didn't finish power without wires, because he had the frequencies wrong and he had the nodal locations wrong. 60 hertz ain't never going to work. 50 is perfect. Golden ratio times Planck, et cetera. You got to use the right cascade or you're never going to get global wireless power, because global wireless power is just an example of telepathy at work. <laughs> it's charge distribution efficiency, which is sometimes translated as hey ave or heaven. So we're not going to go into all the physics slides. This is the equation. And you've seen that for Planck times golden ratio. It predicts hydrogen radii and almost all of the biologic frequencies, Schumann, Schumann harmonics. And it's the most common frequencies mentioned in all the cancer literature, the basis of Therify.net. It's heart rate variability. Again, you've seen these slides before, and we'll go into this more in depth. And here's how the calculations are done. But just so you see, here is the hydrogen bond at the center of every DNA codon ladder rung, literally the lightning up the zipper of DNA. That's hydrogen. And there's the bond at the center, golden ratio times Planck. Precisely, phase conjugate. This is the only reason hydrogen makes gravity. And this is the only reason that DNA can hold the lightning called human bliss. It's the same physics. So this leads up to the conversation below where you see the braiding algorithm in DNA during human bliss that implodes and makes that coherent longitudinal, which is how you take memory through death and have an out-of-body experience. So this is the key slide here that, and you've all seen this before probably anyway. So when the vortex forms accurately, the squeezing pine cone, whether it's your brainwave harmonics, your heart harmonics, or the braiding into your DNA, or the harmonics of a pyramid making gravity, it's called a gra gravity diode, the activity is the same. This is the picture. The golden spiral down that vortex light cone called a caduceus, which in physics is called phase conjugation, converts the transverse wave on the left into a longitudinal propagating wave on the right, the only physics of gravity, for example. So when that squirt gun is working, after successful compression, your aura is emanating that coherent longitudinal, the Ba from the Ka, the Kezja on the rainbow light body, and that's giving you the coherence required to inhabit, inhabit the array. And the array is the song line, the dreaming track, the longitudinal nodes, which are essential all the things we're talking about today, out-of-body experience, remote viewing, astral travel, if you can't find the nodes in this array, you ain't going to get much leverage. Another example is, um, you know, you've seen the, the saints who are floating and making gravity. Well, this is the, the famous EM drive, and the implosion of the trapezoidal array of microwave in the EM drive is creating the phase conjugation, spinning out longitudinal, and that's how and why the EM drive is making gravity, and that's how and why you should be making gravity, too. <laughs> and so this is all about Schauberger's vortex making gravity and the Mercury vortex making gravity in the Hana, uh, Hanabu uh, Vimana Nazi Bell. So the point is that if the angle of that array is correct, then of that vortex, then the 
transverse EMF is squeezed down the pine cone at an accurate phase conjugate angle, spitting out coherent longitudinal EMF at the tip of that squirt gun. And that's the only way to make gravity. That was called impulse power in Star Trek. The warp function is analogous, but it involves a piezo quartz. And here are some of the published physics papers on this, and we're not going to do all the public physics, physics papers. This is, this is our publications on the physics, which are reviewed beautifully at planckfire.com. But just so you get the flavor, here is Mandelbrot, here is fractality, and here is golden ratio. Golden ratio is obviously and self-evidently the perfection of fractality because it is self-similarity, self-embedding perfected scaling perfected and most physicists already agree that fractality causes gravity but they just don't know, realize what a fractal electric field looks like hint your dna <laughs> and when you can implode or non-destructively compress charge then you can spit out that longitudinal coherence and that ability to be that squirt gun means you can navigate when you lucid dream when remote view when you astral travel if you can't direct the direction of the plasma vortex of the squirt gun called your consciousness, then you ain't going to make gravity and you ain't going to steer too good. So as uh, Kepler said, this charge collapse perfected, it's a platonic nest because that's how you make golden rays using nest platonics. When you nest platonics, this is our star mother kit, you implode capacitance, sometimes called the philosopher's stone, and that is what enables the making of gravity. That is why... Golden mean ratio is the dominant geometry of all interstellar orbital mechanics. I repeat, golden ratio is the dominant geometry of all orbital mechanics. That is a smoking gun because that's the only way you can make and stabilize gravity and atmosphere. So that's why golden ratio is the signature footprint of every orbital mechanic in the solar system and the galaxy, like from spiral arms here. It's all golden ratio optimized because that's the only way you can stabilize gravity and atmosphere and neg entropy. So that's the array that you need to inhabit in order to lucid dream in remote view is you need to find the nodes of that array and you get leverage on that array. And the result of that recursive turning inside out implosive compression, obviously is what we're talking about, that that's how you implode and spit out the longitudinal coherence, which enables that remote viewing, that astral travel, that boff in the car, that Kesjan light body. And all of our literature about the physics of, of what a valentine, what love is. It's, here's the way you touch someone to say love. Here's the moment of maximum compression, hint, golden ratio. Here's the geometry of the perfect birth canal. And it creates that implosion. That's embeddability and that's literally lo-fi or love. And so the climax part of this little slideshow is um, how we apply that to DNA and the science of death. You've seen these before. So it's well known at the time of death there's something called the Heinrich Clouvet form constant, lattice cobweb tunnel spiral. And now we know what that is. That's the DNA recursively braid imploding in order to take you through death. That's why you see that, why you see your whole life compressed just before the moment of death and why death visions are electric contagious because successful death has to be a compression black hole to propagate you into that array. That's also why things like Therify.net are so helpful for releasing stuck ghosts, because now we electrical engineers know what a stuck ghost is. Hello, <laughs> if you didn't die so good. No, you need a certain inertia of implosive compression to enable distribution and embedding into that array. They say go into the light. What they actually mean is propagate into the array. And there's an admission ticket into that array, and that is compression. And guess what? Love compresses perfectly, but anger, <laughs> actually the centic wave rate for anger is one over seven. It's perfectly non-compressible. You cannot squeeze it. It will never implode. And so you can never, never, ever take anger through death. It is not electrically possible because it cannot be imploded or compressed. It's not a distributable wave by definition. It's perfect for canceling waves. You can make anger and you know get the money changers out of the temple because you make maximum destructive wave interference. But if you want to die well, you <laughs> so this is the metaphor here. It, it, this is actually not it's more than metaphor, it is physics. 
So this implosion algorithm, the recursive braiding of DNA that responds to love, literally bliss or implosion. So it creates this pair of vortex pine cones called phase conjugation or four wave mixing, which is how you create neg entropy and phase conjugate optics. But it's also how you go through death. You do that implosion. And that's why the Tibetans use that as their bon po, which actually was you know, the perfect flame or the flame in mind. Choosing compassion carefully aligns the... And that's why that is what the grail cup is. And so you see, this lady went into the therapy. She had a vision of the grail. Well, she was seeing implosion. So this is the perfect yearning. We get the holy grail, which has no inside or outside, solves the problem of separateness, contains self-embeds, the Sufi heart within heart, feminine reproductive organs, into that 3D fractal, you can zoom in forever and always see the same thing. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Bear with me just one second. Apologies. So um, this is the actual geographic, geometric of the golden ratio recursive braiding in DNA. And what we caused to be measured was the response of this braiding in DNA to human bliss, where you have coherent EKG, and the DNA recursively braid implodes in beds like this, and actually becomes toroidal. So what's happening in DNA is that the phonon cascade of the love wave golden ratio, five harmonics in EEG brain waves, and coherent EKG. And your DNA responds to that coherent phonon by recursively braid imploding, and it's from thread to string to rope to fat rope. And that compression process ultimately makes... This is from Ann Ting, who originally uh, did that work from Geometric Extensions of Consciousness, my friend from Coxeter's work and all based on golden ratio. So the DNA actually then ultimately makes it kind of a torus, a donut. And that implosion is your DNA spitting out that longitudinal coherence, which is that Kesjan rainbow light body. And here is the actual EKG coherence that I taught HeartMath how to measure and that I showed then Glenn Ryan how to measure that causing this before and after amount of the enzyme of the zipper of recursive braid coherence in DNA. So your DNA literally measurably thickens or braids in response to coherent EKG. That's how I invented heart coherence. You can read the story at realheartcoherence.com and the plot thickens. This is the geometry of the perfect birth canal doing that implosion, the physics of rebirthing. So, and this is... Um, how that array works, it actually creates perfected distribution. So because the balls are locked into the array, when you touch one, a billiard, billion, billiard, billion, billiard balls down the row, <laughs> the other one pops off at the other end of that array. And that's why Dave said when he looked at the dolmen in 2001, he says, there's thousands of them in here, Dave. <laughs> and so we have animations of the braiding, and I'm not going to do all the animations today. I think we're running out of time. But just you see how the, there's a braid within a braid of the braid of the braid. And that implosion is happening when you get that kind of coherence. This is the DNA in a ring donut actually measured microscopically after that coherent braid. And that's called Lord of the Ring actually, and, the, and this is the angle that enables those donuts to braid, which is the letters on the side of the ring lord. And so this is, you know, Agnihotra is like your bliss process. If you do it at sunrise, sunset, do it where the magnetic lines cross, the same place you want to put your therify or your temple or your labyrinth or your own bliss at the magnetic line cross points, then at sunrise, sunset, this is what enables this process. So... Short summary, the challenge is to take everything you knew about the spiritual story of out-of-body, remote viewing, astral travel, and now think of it with precision, electrically. We know the frequency signature. We know the geometry. We know the, how to locate the nodes of the enabling array. We know how to produce the array. We actually know how to produce teleport and, and stargates as well. But let's start with the basics here, guys. You need to find the compression nodes and use them like a ladder. Where I'm sitting here, there's a magnetic line from Kanagu, the sacred Cathar mountain. And it's 
crosses this house rather beautifully, right? <laughs> it's, it's kind of a nice spot. And that magnetic line enables some things that would not be possible for me if I was living in a big city because the magnetic lines aren't coherent enough. So, you know, I'm not being, I'm not even saying that the person who invented cities should apologize. I'm not sure. I think maybe they should, but okay. So the person who invented cities hasn't apologized yet. In the meantime, <laughs> It is magnetic coherence, which enables you to have a soul. So to find that in the city takes some doing. You, you make, a, make a magnetic map of your bed, your house, and your backyard. Rearrange each one to look like a rose. Then you're done. <laughs> so the ability to feel that magnetic line, which evolves, the more you're able to have bliss experience, the more your, your DNA has imploded, you've felt that lightening up your tailbone, the physics of Kundalini. You can see our professional documentary on the biophysics of Kundalini, including the presentation for Portal to Ascension at goldenmean.info slash Kundalini. Point being is when you get, the more you get access to that bliss process, the more your DNA implodes and gets tuned to longer and longer waves. Now, in my case, that has come to mean something interesting. We were doing a project here in South France, rainmaking actually by labyrinth building. And step one, when you're rainmaking labyrinth building, you, you step up to this big field and you got to locate where the magnetic line crosses in that large field. And you, do, you don't want to take the whole damn day to do it. Well, I discovered that if I just relax and kind of close my eyes and point, the magnetic line calls me and I can I can walk right to the magnetic line cross in a very big field rather quickly, almost every time. If there's some things I'm not quite so good at, like I, my friends can measure the number of gallons of water flowing underneath. I'm not that good a douser. But to find the magnetic line crosses, and I realized that that's because of so many years of Kundalini my DNA became tuned, actually. So there were certain things that you, can't, you could call them the cities or blessings that come from many years of bliss process. So this is something we evolved to. So the final thought of this conversation would then be hygiene, which should probably be the final thought of every conversation. What does astral hygiene mean? Astral hygiene means that before you go into that bar where almost everyone there has plasma parasites in their aura, you might become slightly aware that you don't want your aura to bleed and have all kinds of plasma parasites climbing on board. That's called astral hygiene 101. <laughs> and the ability to have that discrimination to keep your damn aura in one piece. <laughs> That's, it, ain't, it ain't complicated. You want to go through death well, you're going to need to learn how to keep your aura in one piece. And step one is called astral hygiene, which is discriminating. <laughs> you know, you, you don't need to tell your kids, you know, not to do uh, recreational drugs. You give them a GDV, a bio well, and you show them how to measure the holes in the aura. This is called astral hygiene 101. So astral hygiene means the ability that virtually everything you do is about growing the coherence of your aura, which is the stuff which you, you require to take with you if you want to lucid dream, astral travel, remote view. <laughs> I reminded when the, uh, I think it was, uh, ah, who was it? It wasn't uh, Hal Putoff and uh, Russell Tard. They were saying, somebody told us that they have alarms to detect remote viewers at Area 51. <laughs> now, as an electrical engineer, it took me some years to figure out how that alarm worked. But actually, I kind of now know. Because <laughs> wherever, you, wherever you, you create a compressional node in the array where someone is looking at you from behind your back and you can feel it. Well, that's the elastic nature of the array. And as you become centered and centripetal into that array, that is the development of your leverage. It was isn't always... There part, isn't there parts of the brain that are actually more activated for remote viewers in the hypothalamus, the catup and the put up that they measured more white matter as as That's magnetic. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure if I know that example. I know in um, dyslexia, they have measured increased uh, corpus callosum wiring between right and left hemisphere. That's why dyslexics are more creative because there's more connection. What, but to tighten that, you do that figure eight infinity walk and you implode that connection and dyslexia goes away and creativity increases. So that's another thing is Bentoff measured the phonon implosion from the sacrocranial uh, imploding the ventricle liquid horns, uh, getting horny, which is a phonon compression that crystallizes the ventricle liquids, actually. And we measure that now in heart rate var variability and the breath at, with the flame in mind and iThrive.com. So we do know the brain physiology of compression, uh, uh, but your question is still useful. Uh, I, what the example I was just about to mention was uh, the, the famous story when, uh, I think it was... Uh, who was it? My friend who was who met the white Draco queen personally. <laughs> anyway, well, you know when the, when the Draco approaches and you feel a vice like grip, mind milled with an Orion queen mug. Well, you are perceiving the strength of consciousness of this being is literally measurable by how much they can squeeze. And this begins with, with Bill Tiller's book, uh, Conscious Acts of Creation, in which he measured that focused human attention causes charge to compress. No one can argue it's been measured so many times. I'm the first one to explain why and how focused human attention causes electric fields to compress, because we described that implosion, which is the physics of consciousness. So the point is that the power, the strength, the sustainability, the immortality of your consciousness is literally, literally how centripetal it is. <laughs> and so the ability to squeeze something, <clears throat> which is sometimes known as embedding inside of, for example, the tornado is coming, you would like to steer it. You watch the bioplasmic streamers from your body embed in the tornado and you become the the center of gravity of that tornado because the tornado fell in love with you when you when it realized you felt its pain. So that's that's a good example. You can embed your aura in something larger than you called falling in love. And you can do it with a person, but you could do it with a mountain. You could do it with a, you know, a, a solar system, you know, certainly with Gaia, certainly with the sun. There are lots of things you can embed your aura into. But by the way, don't try it with a metal building. It ain't going to work good. <laughs> no, <laughs> you do not want to fall in love with a metal building. It ain't healthy. Why? Because electrically implosion ain't possible there. It also means, for example, when, when the medical doctors, surgeons were, they, they were on the operating table. This is, there are many of them. And, and they had, they were medically dead and they were watching someone operating on their body from outside their body and they're outside their body looking at their body from outside guess where they were never looking from they were never looking from inside a metal box no you're not going to get ghosts inside metal boxes. You're not going to get living plasma inside metal boxes. You're not going to get therify inside. You're not going to get sacred spaces. And you're not going to fall in love inside metal boxes. No, because the dielectric wrong is wrong and charge implosion ain't possible. That is the reason biologic architecture exists for the high dielectric enabling implosion that enables consciousness to inhabit the array. So don't try falling in love with something which is non-biological because the implosion is going to be inhibited and your inertia is going to be reduced, your life force. So the, the Sufi saying was you only fall in love with pure intention. But what that really means is that pure intention is a name to be able to direct the charge into perfect distribution. And so essentially when you're... You, I'm, getting old and growing old. How's it have the song go? Um, you're looking for love and you're getting old. No, the thing is that you're, you've been yearning to find pure intention outside you your whole life. And then you realize, oops, <laughs> pure intention is a name to locate the vector of perfected distribution called Hey Ave, Heaven, flames, Plains of Sharon, you know, Shams Elysee. These are names for an array which in which distribution is perfected 
And that is where remote viewing is perfect. Astral travel is perfect. It's named heaven. You know, when Lawrence Gardner figured out that the plains of Sharon in the Genesis of the Grail Kings was actually, it was actually the book, The Sacred Ark, uh, was actually the infinite dielectric electron shell unpacking of monoatomic gold called Plains of Sharon. Literally, the Israeli Hebrew name for heaven. Hey, are they perfected distribution? So everyone is looking for heaven and they're getting old. <laughs> so the ability to find that perfection of distribution, this is learn geobiology, learn biologic architecture, learn a little bit of dowsing, and then you're learning where to get leverage on the array. Every time you saw the ancient Aboriginal shamans sitting there, they look like they're sleeping, but actually <laughs> their eyes are closed and they're moving tornadoes a hundred miles down the song line. How are they doing that? They're inhabiting the array. <laughs> and they will not try that. They would never attempt that if they were not on the song line. That's an introduction to what longitudinal array does. It's measured that that magnetic line cross points enable telepathy commercially. Those magnetic line cross points reduce nuclear critical mass measurably. We know exactly why. It's the physics of the Ark of the Covenant, actually. So that discovery of that array, the physics of that coherent compressional nodes of the longitudinal place where the wave from your aura bounces down into that fractal dodeca ecosa array, becoming familiar with that array and learning literally this is the lens for the eyeball of your inner vision. Yes, we have the theoretical term longitudinal physics, yes, and the electrical engineering is now teachable. We know the measurement, we know the frequency signature, but it comes down to the practice of understanding that the visions at the nodes of that array is literally what we've been calling the eye of God. How am I doing time-wise, Alan? Are we uh, good, good here? <clears throat> Um, do we have more questions or so it, it, is, is my enthusiasm yeah. with the questions? Um, no questions, just comments. Oh, okay. The, but remember, I started out with the enthusiasm to say, if we can explain to the government how to measure what it is to have a soul in your kids, then when governments make decisions about vaccinations and schools and, <laughs> and cities and all this crap, suddenly the question of what is a soul becomes a legally defined electrical engineering answer to a question. And we could have a culture which have, has a soul. This is why I'm a little bit enthused about making this teachable. And so that's my enthusiasm here. And could you elaborate on that last point just a little bit more? So with with knowing about this information, when there is some sort of control mechanism that is being imposed upon us, we now have the information, technical information on how we can transcend that. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's what I'm trying. For example, when there were hundreds of stories that the family dog didn't recognize the person who came back from being medically stabbed because their aura departed. <laughs> You know, you could have guessed maybe there was a little issue here. Now, if we were measuring that aura and we knew that it's the only way to take something through death, and that was a legally defined process, suddenly that could be a factor in deciding whether or not to the, allow the government to take your aura wow. away from you. Wow. So that's going to require implementation in society of this technology. Exactly. Exactly. Is that what you're working on? Yes, we need to. That's why measuring when young people learn to lucid dream is so useful because you're effectively learning when they get a soul, when they have a soul. Mm -hmm. And and we know the frequency signatures now, which trigger that. It's a compression process. We know the kind of coherence in your aura, which enables lucid dreaming, remote viewing, astral travel, that it's longitudinal coherence. These things are measurable. And once wow. this is a measurable, well, 
there was something called the IGA, the International Geophysical Anomaly Detector from Russia. It was a longitudinal wave detector. You know, when they use, use these devices to measure gravity waves, they measure whether one billionth of a percent of length has disappeared over a distance, and they call it measuring gravity. It was simple. Hodawanik and Re Ramsey measured gravity waves with, with the capacitor and the rust track recorder. It's kind of a long story. But I give you another practical example. When... The Princeton Newosphere Project measured when 3,000 people died on 9-11 by using what they call the Josephson Junction in a random number generator. They didn't know that the Josephson Junction is mediated by capacitive coupling. And the coherence in that capacitive coupling is a neat way to measure a longitudinal wave. <laughs> mm. so, so there are many ways in which longitudinal waves can be measured. But remember, governments as a whole have been usually willing to kill anyone who learns about longitudinal waves because, you know, that's the Russian woodpecker, that's Tom Bearden, that's how you create, uh, you know, the beam weapons. It's all about longitudinal coherence. So yes, it's the biggest threat to military national security in history, learning about longitudinal coherence. Oh, but it's also how your soul works. Oops, <laughs> is yeah. having a soul a threat to national security? Oh, you need mm. to learn about longitudinal coherence. Oh, well, you might not need to learn how to make paint that bounces radar. <laughs> it's wow. the same physics. <laughs>